Hi, this is Kevin Trainer, and uh, welcome to my lecture on uh, Chapter 7 of uh, the Leighton Book. In uh, Chapter 7, we talk about um, Agile Planning. And um, so you remember that we said that uh, compared to more traditional approaches uh, to PM, that Agile had uh, more lightweight uh, planning. And that, that's an accurate uh, description. But that's not to say that there's no planning at all. Okay? So there is a bit of planning that goes on before we start the project. And in our class, uh, we uh, we have a week in which we do agile planning, and the um, the output of that agile planning activity are a, uh, two documents: uh, the product vision and the product road map. Okay, so those are other lightweight planning uh, documents, and how do we create them? Well, the uh, the project team, the actual project team, creates those uh, documents in consultation with the product owner and other stakeholders as well. Okay, so let's uh, let's kind of go through and um, I guess one of the first things that we should re really do is to see. This agile planning process in perspective of the entire uh, kind of flow of uh, the Scrum Agile approach, okay? So um, the first thing that we create is a document, which you're going to say is a pretty, pretty lightweight. It's sort of a one-pager. Um, it's a vision for the product. Um, the next thing that we do is that we create a product road map and that essentially has the features uh, and again features in uh, in agile are uh, uh, primarily user stories it has the user stories organized in a uh, in a um, kind of a calendar way. So it's it's sort of a rough uh, calendar plan about uh, how we would go at implementing the features. Okay, those are the upfront activities. That's what we do in Agile planning. Then we move into sprints, right? And you have to remember that um, Oh, I'm sorry. There is a third uh, 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 a part of Agile planning, and it is release uh, planning. And the reason that I don't emphasize that a lot in my lecture for this course is that we uh, uh, we have some pretty small project. We're going to have a single release of the software. So the release planning that we do is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be a statement that... Uh, we uh, have a single release, and that's because we have a short uh, project, uh, and that's the practical thing to do. Now, if you have a longer Agile project, you can get the opportunity to get some um, some value from uh, subsets of the uh, product by actually releasing them into the field uh, before the overall project is uh, finished. Okay, so uh, inside of a a sprint, we begin by sprint planning. Again, this is a half a day or less. And then we have uh, a bunch of daily cycles. So you can uh, you can see it here, here it says one to four weeks. Uh, it, it, that's when we have the sprint. And um, we pick two. Two is very popular. 
Uh, four is uh, long. Um, a lot of uh, there are some uh, people who are pretty aggressive who do it in one week uh, sprints. Okay. Every day we have a daily scrum. Okay. Then at the very end of the sprint, and typically the last day, we have a sprint review, which takes a half a day or less, and a sprint retrospective, which we've already talked about before, which takes a half a day or less. Okay, so apart from these uh, lightweight planning things, which is what our chapter is about, uh, everything goes on inside the sprint. And for our project, uh, we're going to do a uh, one week of this light week uh, planning. And then we're going to have uh, two week sprints after that. And we're going to have a final one week release sprint. Okay. Okay, so where can we go from here? Well, let's just talk about the planning activities. So let me go... Let me try to scroll a little bit faster, okay? I want to hit the major points. What's the product vision? Well, the product vision is a, a pretty cool thing. Uh, the Agile guys really borrowed their uh, thoughts about how to plan for, uh, in particular, a software product or, or a service from uh, product planning and product management uh, people. Okay, so that's why they use this word product all the time. Okay, and here's what we're looking for. Um, uh, let's look at what one of these things looks like. Okay, so let's look at the output before we look at the recipe for creating it. Okay, so they talk about creating a draft. So uh, here's what a product vision statement looks like. Okay, and the, at the top of the page, they're giving us a, a kind of a form to fill out. Say for a target customer who has uh, some needs, which we describe, the product name, is a product uh, category that product uh, benefit reason to buy, unlike competitors, and why we say uh, competitors, that would be competing products or perhaps uh, no product at all or no service at all. Our product, and then you, you say what uh, the uh, differentiation and the value proposition of your product or service is. Okay, so this is very marketing oriented. Okay, um, it doesn't go into a lot of detail about what the features are. Okay, uh, but I think it does a good idea of creating the vision for what's the product and how it's positioned. So here's an example for XYZ bank customers who want access to banking capability while on the go. The my XYZ is a mobile application, probably a mobile banking application that allows secure on demand banking 24 hours a day. Unlike online banking from your home or office computer, our product allows users immediate access, apparently using the, their uh, mobile device, which supports our strategy uh, it, it to provide quick, convenient banking services anytime, anywhere. And so this supports our strategy is a Platinum Edge edition. So this is... Uh, 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 Platinum Edge is um, uh, Layton's uh, consulting firm. And they believe you should tie it into a strategy of your organization. And I couldn't argue with that. I think it's a great idea. 
Okay, so um, this is what you want to come up with for whatever product or service you're uh, creating um, uh, in your uh, project. Okay, so how would you go about uh, doing that? Well, you consult with your product owner, okay, and you uh, collaborate and you come up with this. Again, it fits on a page. It probably would fit on an index card like a lot of the uh, documentation that we do in Scrum, uh, uh, they draw it up in a way where it looks like you could put it on a 3 by 5 index card. So it, 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 it's more, it's the value of the thought rather than the quantity of, of the words. Uh, okay, so what's their recipe for this? Well, I'm not going to go through all of it, but they talk about... Uh, uh, creating a draft, right? Um, and then what do you do? Uh, well, you create a draft and then you show it to people involved with the project, including uh, the project owner owner, and perhaps other stakeholders, uh, and you get some feedback and you, uh, and you nail it down. It's really that easy. Okay? Now, uh, how does the product vision help? The product vision helps us is it's an overall, it's a very marketing oriented statement of the scope of the project. Okay, so when we're looking, uh, and we're going to be doing that really soon in, in the product roadmap, when we're looking at that, we're going to be asking ourselves, uh, does this a feature that we're talking about does it fit into the vision okay and if it doesn't it's really outside of the scope of the project on the other hand uh, the problem could be with the way you stated the vision okay but before you bring requirements into the project and you put them on on the product uh, backlog um, you really ought to ask yourselves as a team including the uh, product owner, does it fit within the vision? If it doesn't fit within the vision, it probably shouldn't go under the backlog. If it, do, uh, if it doesn't fit within the vision and you want to include it on the product uh, backlog, well, uh, then you probably ought to go and do some surgery to your, vision, to your product vision statement. Okay? So that's what the product vision statement is all about. Okay. Oh, and validating and revising it. So they're uh, talking about who you're going to uh, review it with uh, the whole bit. Um, again, you want to review this and have the parties involved in the project uh, sign off on it before you move ahead. Okay? Okay. And they have a way to finalize it. Okay? So there's a real uh, cookbook uh, there. So what's the next of the planning uh, documents that we're going to do for our project? Uh, well, we're going to create a product roadmap. So what is a product roadmap? Um, um, it is an ordered list of the features of the product and perhaps uh, some, uh, uh, some of the... Um, some of the non-functional requirements as well. But it's an ordered list to help you understand them. And ideally, um, it eventually gets expressed as, a, as a, a timetable. So when we talk about a roadmap, we're talking about uh, this. What are the pieces of this product? And then how do we intend to create them over time? so that at the end we have the full product okay and again there's uh 
there's a bit of a, a, a cookbook. Uh, identify the stakeholders, establish the requirements and add them to the roadmap. Again, a requirement for us in Scrum is either going to be a user story or it's going to be a um, it's going to be a, a task that represents some kind of uh, non-functional requirement. Uh, install the database. Uh, uh, purchase the uh, personal computers, uh, something like that. Uh, you arrange the product requirements based upon values, risks, and dependencies. You estimate the development effort at a high level and prioritize the product's requirements. You, de you determine high-level time frames for releasing groups of uh, functionality to the customer. Okay, now, there are two of the things that they ask us to do here that they don't really fully describe in that chapter. Uh, okay, uh, one is that they say that we ought to, at this point, um, that we ought to establish the uh, requirement. Well, how do we uh, how do we express a requirement? Well, we express a requirement as a user story. How do we learn about user stories? Well, not in chapter seven. We learn about them in chapter eight. We learn the details in uh, chapter eight. So we're going to take a peek ahead right now and look at what a user story looks like, and then we're going to come back to this uh, point. So right here. We're on 127, and let's, let's go ahead and uh, jump ahead to Chapter 8. Okay, and in Chapter 8, you're going to see uh, um, you're going to see two things that you have to do at a high level in uh, your roadmap. One is is that you have to document the requirements, and two is you have to do some sort of estimate. Okay, so requirements are user stories. Okay, what's a user story look like? Well, you know what? It fits on a um, it fits on an index card. Okay, uh, so l let's see, do we have a, yeah, here we go, here's the recipe for it. User story will have, at a minimum, the following parts. A title, a type, uh, uh, it should say, as a type of user, I want to take this action so I get this uh, benefit. Uh, the user story also includes a list of validation steps or acceptance criteria to, um, to take so that you know that the working requirement for the user story is uh, correct. And you usually say, when I take this action, this happens. Okay, so what's an example of that? Well, going along with that banking system that we talked about before. Uh, so, uh, these are the two sides of an index card. Are we going to use index cards on our project? No, we're not going to use index cards. We're going to use, uh, Jira software using the Agile project, uh, template, which in fact, uh, has, uh, places to describe the user stories. Okay. So that's how we're going to do it. Um, and uh, we can make them as long as we want. But our thought should be, um, a user story should be about this big. It should fit on an index card. So uh, the title, transfer money between accounts as Carol. Carol is a persona. I, uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. I want to transfer funds between accounts so that each account has the correct amount of uh, funds. Okay, that's it. Okay, 
What's a uh, Carol? Well, we'll talk about this when we get to chapter eight, but Carol is the name of a persona. Um, what a lot of people do, this is an idea that really grew out of interaction uh, design. What you do is that you, uh, you pick a couple of user types for your system and you document them in a realistic way and you even give them names. In fact, what some people will do is they'll give them a backstory and, and they'll have a picture for them. Um, and how does it help you? Well, it, 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 keeps you um, it keeps you grounded in terms of who really are the users of your system. If, you, if you're trying to think of a requirement and you can't identify which of your personas is going to use it, then it probably isn't a requirement. Okay, and we'll get into that when we get to chapter eight. Uh, and then on the back, we have these examples of how the functionality works um, that we can use in our uh, testing. And also, it helps us to kind of understand the functionality. So when I review my account uh, balances, I see an option to transfer funds. When I select the transfer option, I choose between which accounts I want to transfer funds. When I select the transfer from option, I, I see a list of my available account, accounts and balances. When I select the transfer to option, I see the list of my available accounts and, and, and balances. I probably would, would go one further and say, uh, when I say uh, to execute the transfer, uh, the transfer happens, right? So that's a that's a user story, okay? Um, the other thing that we have in this uh, chapter that we kind of look ahead to is this idea of uh, how do we estimate, okay? talk about sprint backlog and all that kind of stuff but there is a point where we estimate um let's see if i can get to that is th there is a point where we estimate how big each user story is and uh, it's not until chapter nine I guess. Um, I'm going to have to find that later. What we do is uh, we estimate them in terms of uh, an arbitrary number of uh, points. So the team all uh, guesses. Uh, how big is this user story in terms of uh, work to implement? And uh, typically we come up with uh, a number between uh, one and eight, uh, something like that. And we get into more detail later, but uh, we want to make sure that as we pick them to put into sprints, we know about how big they are. So when we're doing our planning, okay, um, back here in uh, chapter seven, okay, and here we are, we're back here, we're on page 127, I think. So let me scroll up to there. When we're doing that, we're going to have to at least identify the user stories. We're, I'm not saying that you have to write them all, you have to fill out the whole index card, but you're, you're certainly going to have to have the title. Uh, okay, wish I could scroll a little faster. That'll let me scroll faster. 127. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, you're going to uh, have to have to put together your roadmap. You're going to have to have the uh, the first cut of your user stories, and you're going to have to have some fo uh, some first cut of the estimate. Uh, okay. So you know about how big they are. Okay, and you ought to, you probably are going to pick about how important you think that they are. Okay, 
Now, are you going to do this just among the uh, development team? No, you're going to consult the, uh, the product owner as well. Okay, and the product owner may be uh, consulting the uh, other stakeholders in the product owner's organization. Okay, so this is in establishing the project requirements. So uh, the question is, how, how many requirements have you got? And how big, uh, uh, and, and how are you going to organize them in the roadmap, okay? And uh, the ones that, I'm foc that I focus you on are these two, user stories and tasks, okay? What's a user story? Well, we just saw a user story, okay? What's a task? A task is uh, some... For us, it's going to be a non-functional requirement. There are people who take their user stories and then they break them up into pieces. And so there are tasks that are under user stories. And then there are tasks that are for non-functional requirements. We're going to leave our user stories intact. And our tasks are going to represent the non-functional requirements like install the database, uh, uh, get a domain name, those kinds of things. Uh, sign the client up for an ISP, get the client to sign themselves up for an ISP and get a domain name. Those kinds of things are going to be tasks. Okay. These things above, okay, themes, epic user stories, uh, these are ways to aggregate and organize um, requirements, user stories, and their associated uh, tasks that uh, support them. Okay. Do we need to use these? Well, we, we're definitely not going to use epic user stories. Epic user stories are just an aggregation of user stories. Uh, these would be the kind of things that some people would call a uh, a subsystem. Okay, it's not the entire system, but it's a bunch of the features aggregated uh, together, um, and um, together they do a related thing. Okay, our projects are not going to be big enough that they need. We need to take our user stories and aggregate them into epic user stories. Uh, themes. Theme is a logical group of features and also a requirement at its highest uh, level. You may group uh, features into themes in your product roadmap. Okay, so product roadmaps are taking the features that you're going to get in terms of user stories and they're plotting them out uh, chronologically um, uh, how do you expect them roughly to fit into sprints? And you could also uh, divide them into themes. Okay, so maybe uh, if you thought of this as a spreadsheet, uh, uh, the sprints would be the columns. Okay, um, the, uh, the rows would hold the user stories and perhaps some of the significant uh, tasks. And maybe you would group them into groups. You know, you'd have a group of uh, rows that had a, a sort of a, a theme name in bold that said, okay, this group of user stories is really this theme or that theme or another theme. Okay, that's what themes are, okay? Probably the, the, uh, the projects that we're creating, though, are only big enough to, uh, um, you know, we're probably going to have something like uh, uh, five user stories, ten user stories, okay? A big system could have a hundred user stories. It could have two hundred user stories. We could have all these other ways to group them. 
So for this project that we're doing now, which is a good size starter project for Agile, uh, we're not going to need Epic User Stories. Uh, the features are going to be User Stories. Uh, and to some extent, uh, the tasks for non-functional features. Uh, the themes are perhaps the thing that you'll use to group the user stories and tasks uh, when you put them into the roadmap. Okay, so let's just go down and look at what a roadmap might look like. How would you arrange them? Uh, uh, what a lot of people do is that they take them and they put them on sticky notes and uh, they uh, put the sticky notes on um, a board or a poster or something like that. Okay, so these are features grouped by themes. These look pretty much like they're all user stories. Okay. Now, how are we going to estimate the effort? Uh, we really just want to, uh, we're probably going to give each of the user stories and, and the tasks that we put onto the roadmap. Give them a number between 1 and 8, where 8 is uh, very big, and uh, so it's sort of extra large, and uh, 1 is extra small. Okay. And I think we have one more picture of what one of these looks like um, that I want to point out. Yeah, so here we have them by quarter. Uh, okay, so um, we definitely would want you to um, lay yours out by sprints. Now, are we going to, because uh, again, our uh, project is going to take, well, is it going to take a calendar quarter? I guess, yeah, sure, it's going to take a little bit more than a calendar quarter. But um, what, what we want to do is we want to roughly lay these out in, into the sprints we think they're going to fall into. Is that a commitment? No, it's a rough plan, okay? At the beginning of every sprint, we're going to do sprint planning, and then we're going to pick, um, you know, pro we'll probably peek at the roadmap when we're picking um, the, the requirements that we're going to put into the sprint. But, of course, uh, time will have gone by, and our perception of how big or small things are will have shifted. And our perception of their priority and their value will have uh, shifted. But this is just a rough view of what you know uh, when you're doing your Agile planning. Okay? Okay. Um, what's left? So the... the uh, the uh, the product uh, backlog is just the aggregation of all the user stories and the tasks. And again, for us, the tasks are going to be work associated with non-functional requirements. Uh, we uh, we just uh, list them all out. Okay. Um, we tend to uh, a proper product uh, backlog is. Uh, listed by priority okay and it's from this list that we pick uh the sprint uh backlog when we begin to plan each uh sprint so uh typically we order these things so the things that are have the highest uh priority are at the top so it's like skimming the cream off uh, okay uh when we come to that so here's a sample product uh, backlog. Okay. And that, where are we? That is uh, that. Uh, okay. So um, the two agile planning documents that we're going to do in our planning week, which in our classes in week six, 
are going to be product vision statement and product roadmap. Okay? And that's it. You, uh, we've covered enough that with, uh, you know, some peeking at the recipe aspects of the chapter while you're doing the work, you ought to be able to do it just fine. So that's all for now. Uh, I'll say bye until next time. Bye-bye.